Hi everyone, welcome to Wikipedia World. In the last session, we were discussing regarding uh, the exposure risk due to fluctuations in foreign exchange. Do you ever wonder why such fluctuation occurs? Well, the prices of a commodity changes due to the change in demand and supply. Likewise, the demand of a currency also fluctuates because of its demand and supply changes. So in an economy, if the balance of trade is unfavorable, which means that the imports are more than exports. So what happens when imports are more than exports? The demand of foreign currency is more than the demand of home currency. So the prices of the foreign currency will rise. So in such scenario, the home currency will be at discount in comparison to the foreign currency. Likewise, if there is a favorable balance of trade situation, that is when exports are more than imports, in such scenario, the home currency will be at premium because its demand is more. The other factors are effect of inflation. So it's assumed that a country where the inflation rate is more, the currency will be at discount. So this we will discuss more while discussing the purchasing power parity theorem and likewise effect of interest rate. So in countries where the interest rate is more, the currency will be at discount and in those countries where there is a low interest rate, the home currency will be at premium. And such is a scenario in the economic growth also. So if the company economy is growing higher, it will also rise the currency of that economy. And if the economic growth is lower, the home currency will be at discount. So all these fluctuations, so there are certain theories also, which actually evaluate that why such exchange risk occurs and effect of inflation and effect of interest rates. So one of the most oldest theory is purchasing power parity theorem. Purchasing power parity theorem has two fundamentals. One is absolute purchasing power parity theorem and the other one is relative purchasing power parity theorem. As per absolute triple BT, the prices of the real goods remain same irrespective where in which location it is being sold. For example, there is one calculator which cost rupees 150 in India and it cost dollar three in USA. So the exchange rate will be rupees 50 per dollar. So as per absolute triple BT, prices of real goods should be remain same in every different country since the exchange rate is just the price of one currency in terms of another currency. So if this parity does not exist, let's say that the exchange rate is dollar one is equal to rupees 40. Here the calculator cost rupees 150 and in USA it cost rupees dollar three. That means in USA that calculator cost rupees 120. So what an arbitrator would do in that case? An arbitrator will prefer that the same good could be purchased in USA at for one dollar 120 and could be sold in India by making a profit of 30 rupees. In this scenario, the demand of foreign currency will rise because the persons are purchasing here and selling here. This will increase the rate of foreign currency and as point will come when dollar one is equal to rupees 50 and the real good will cost equal in both the countries. This means that a commodity will cost the same amount regardless where it is being sold. So considering the example and this theory, there are certain assumptions. When I'm taking that US in India, there is no transaction cost. If I'm saying it is dollar three in USA and rupees 150 in India. So there is no transaction cost. I'm not assuming that the calculator is different. I'm assuming that both the calculators sold in either the countries is identical commodity. There are no trade barriers and no transportation cost. Right. Next fundamental is relative triple T. Related PPT says that change in exchange rate of two currencies relates to change in prices or change in the purchasing power or the inflation rate. As per relative purchasing power parity theorem, if any country which has a high inflation rate, that country will tend to become weaker in comparison to the other country. Let's say that in India, the inflation rate is 15% and in USA, the inflation rate is 5%. As of now, $1 one is equal to $1 150. 
this dollar one will inflate at the rate of five percent. So one into one point zero five will be equal to fifty into one point one five. This means that one point zero five is equal to fifteen to fifteen percent, which will automatically lead to the foreign currency at a premium. So if such scenario exists. the us currency will be at premium because it has a low inflation rate in comparison to the home currency let's take one more example to understand this concept better a tennis racket costs pound 100 in uk and dollar 150 in us <coughs> the current exchange rate is 1 pound is equals to 1.50 explain what happens if the inflation which is presently 0% in both uk and us increases to 10% in the us So pound hundred is equals to US dollar one fifty. Pound has zero inflation rate. So after one year, pound will remain hundred. And UK to equate both the situations, one fifty into rise with ten percent. That will so hundred is equals to dollar one sixty five. This implies pound one is equal to one point six five. So prior to one year, one pound is equal to one point five zero. And now one pound is equal to one point six five. So the pound is at a premium position, and the US dollar is discounted. This means that the currency which has high inflation rate tend to become weaker as comparison to the foreign currency. Okay. And the next is interest rate parity theorem. So we have already discussed balance of trade. We have discussed the effect of inflation, and now the effect of interest. The theory is the country which has higher rate of interest will attract investors from the country which having lower rate of interest so this will ultimately increase the supply of currency having low rate of interest into the country having high rate of interest now the investors of low rate of interest economy will after a certain period expects their principal plus interest amount to be returned back this will create a high demand of their home currency because they have invested principal amount and they need principal plus interest amount in their home currency so what will eventually happen so there will be high rate of interest so there will be a high demand of the currency having lower rate of interest in the forward market and thereby it increases its value therefore the country which has a low rate of interest is always quoted its currency at a premium in the forward market against the currency having a high rate of interest so in an equilibrium situation the forward and the spot rate differential is equal to the differential between the forward rate market and the spot rate value so in an equilibrium situation the forward and spot rate differential which means a forward and the spot rate premium and discount in relation to a currency is always equal to the interest rate differential that is the difference between the interest in the home currency rate and the interest rate in the foreign currency right so basis all these discussion there are certain assumptions in irtp also first that there is no restriction on cash flows from one country to another country right then borrower and deposit rates are the same the bid and the ask rate quoted by the bank are same there is no other factors which affect the forward exchange rate apart from the interest rate let's discuss one example to show that how forward rate and spot rate differential is equals to the interest rate differential let's say that the spot rate of dollar 1 is equal to rupees 52.50 the interest rate in usa is 5% per annum and the interest rate in india is 15% per annum so what will happen after one year dollar 1 will in return give you 1.05 and 52.5 will have to be equal to multiply by 1.15 so this is because they invested dollar 1 which can be grow in us market after one year at 1.05 this should be equal to 52.5 which will grow at 1.15 rate of interest 
because if somebody is investing dollar one, you have to give them fifty two point five multiply by fifteen percent. So after one year, dollar one will be equal to fifty seven point five. So what will be the forward rate after one year? Fifty seven point five. So interest rate differential is equal to the forward rate differential. To explain it further, dollar one into one point zero five. Is equal to fifty two point five into one point one five. This could also be written as dollar one, which is the forward rate of rupees, is equals to fifty two point five, which is the spot rate, multiplied by one point one five, which is the rate of interest in rupees, divided by one point zero five. Simple mathematical formula. So when I say write it in formula terms, dollar one is forward rate in rupees. That is equals to spot rate in rupees multiply by one plus rupees rate that is in uh, in rate of interest in rupees divided by one plus rate of interest in dollar. So now I rearrange it and I reduce minus one both the sides. Forward rate minus spot rate divided by spot rate is equals to one plus rate of interest in rupees less one plus rate of interest in dollar. Divided by one plus rate of interest in dollar. So the forward and spot rate differential is equals to interest rate differential if there is an equilibrium condition. So equilibrium condition means whatever the effect of interest is there, that same effect is there in the forward market also. Right. So let's do an example of forward and spot rate differential of IRTP. Suppose that on first January two thousand one. The spot rate of UK pound one is one point five zero, and the UK and US having an interest rate of six percent and eight percent per annum respectively. What would we expect the one year forward rate to be if there is an equilibrium condition? So UK pound one will be equals to spot rate of dollar multiplied by one plus rate of interest in dollar divided by one plus rate of interest in UK. So that will be one point five zero. Multiply by one point zero point eight zero divided by one plus zero point six zero. So the one year forward rate in pound will be UK pound one is equals to one point five two eight three. So this is because the interest rate in USA is more than the interest rate in UK. So the currency having low rate of interest will be at premium in comparison to the currency having high rate of interest. Thank you so much. In next session, we'll discuss further. Have a great day and keep smiling.